Hi everyone, it's Allison. I'm in my violin studio. Today I want to talk to you about uh, left hand position on the neck of the violin. Uh, this is not a long complicated, um, this is not an introduction to the left hand. This is just uh, one technique or one trick, if you will, for trying to maintain a good left hand position, uh, which is challenging and I find consistently students struggle with uh, a correct left hand hold. Okay, so I'm going to assume that you know that clutching the violin is bad. All right, uh, I'm not going to argue, but why? Don't want to grab it. That grabbing or clutching will prevent you from ever playing well. In you, you might be brilliant, but it'll prevent you. So we want to get rid of that. So what I, I want to show you first to start with is my hand. <laughs> Here, I'm trying to safely put my bow down. Okay, you've got at the base of the fingers, you've got this kind of crease, right? Um, what we want to do, I want you to think of the surface of the fingerboard as, imagine it as being like the water line. That's the surface of the water, okay? It's kind of like, have you ever taken swimming lessons um, and, you know, you're floating on your back and you lift a leg up in the air and all of a sudden your head goes under. It's like there's a limit of how much of you can be above the water. And some of you will always be underneath the water, right? It's, it's kind of an image that maybe is useful to you with the fingerboard. So basically the idea is, <laughs> and it's not because of buoyancy of the water, but um, basically if one side comes up, the other side goes down, right? See what I mean? <laughs> so what we want is we want to have we want to have long fingers, right? You have absolutely no advantage in having short fingers. If you have short fingers, you will have slower notes and you will have out of tune notes and you will be clutching the violin. It's just bad, bad, bad. Don't don't go there. What you want to do is you want to get your hands up high and you want them to be free and relaxed. Okay? So an important part of that is don't let the thumb, the thumb by nature is a clutcher. The thumb, it's pretty big muscles, right? And and our thumbs are used to working and doing a you know, kind of a bully job. You know, they, they can do heavy lifting, right? Or heavy pressing. Um, so it's a, it's a tough sell to say, no, lay back, chill. Don't do anything. <laughs> don't do anything. That's the worst. So in this situation, what I want you to do is take your bow, the, the, the wooden stick, not not the hair, Okay, and just kind of place it in the crease at the bottom of your fingers. Pinky's going to be a, w a little off. Okay, now bring your thumb just to underneath. Okay, now unless you have uh, a hand that's really, really substantially different than mine, um, that's going to mean that, let's look at the thumb. The thumb has a bunch of joints in it. There's this one, which is obvious. Don't do that. Okay that's going to have a really negative repercussions on your playing. So don't do that. It's going to hurt like heck. So a slight, okay, we don't want it like that. Just a slight bump there. We want this one a little bit, see there's a little bit of an angle there. And then there's a, a joint here too. I can't really see it well at that angle. Right there. We want all of these one, two, three. We want those slightly relaxed. And that gives us a U shape here. And of course, I'm sure Hopefully you've been taught that you need to have a mouse hole underneath the violin or a little U shape underneath because the neck of the violin does not sit down in the, the bottom of that U shape. It does not go there. That would be wrong and bad. It sits up here. And of course, the neck of the violin is a little wider than my bow so that we always have this U shape underneath. That's really important. That allows you flexibility, mobility. You're going to be able to uh, swivel your arm around to get all of the four strings. You're going to be able to stretch out your fingers to get fourth fingers and high fourth fingers, and it's going to allow you to shift into position. Okay, so that's really important. We want, we need that space and that flexibility. So looking from the back, here you can see the angle of the thumb better. Joint, 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 all kind of rounded and relaxed. Look at the angles here. We don't don't want something like that. I've seen people hold their hands like that. That means you've got an excessive amount of tension. It will prevent you from doing anything that's fun or pretty. Okay, you're looking for all your joints to be like this, neutral, relaxed. Okay, so 
that's your basic idea. I want to show you what that looks like on a violin. I'm going to try to carefully do this without knocking the camera over, which, which I've done a couple of times now. <laughs> All right. So if you can see, if I was to back my bow up, so when you're playing, just, just hold your hand up. Just actually physically put your bow here, the stick end, not the hair, because you don't, you don't want to wreck your hair. Okay. There's the crease at the base of the fingers and the finger thumb tip about the bottom of that stick. If you have a really large hand, um, and I mean a really large hand, if you're like a big guy, you're, you may be able to have your thumb sticking up a little higher and still have an appreciable U underneath the violin. Most people, if you bring your thumb up, two things happen. One is you lose the U underneath, you know, we need, we need that pocket, free pocket underneath the neck. There's the neck and there's the free pocket, or I'll call it the mouse hole. I always call it the mouse hole. Okay. So if your thumb comes up too much, you lose the mouse hole. That's bad. The other thing that happens, and this is really common, is that in order to bring the thumb up, the fingers just submerge themselves underwater, right? And we see that a lot. You'll see people trying to play like this. What's wrong with this? Well, the thumb is way up on top in dry land and the fingers are submerged underwater and the elbow's off to the side and the violin has been pulled in front instead of being off to the side. All right, that's, so, that's, just, that's just a whole bunch of things that are going south really fast there. Uh, it's important, violin to the left and not exaggeratedly, but I mean, this is, see, nose and scroll <laughs> and, 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 and I've got shoulders here. That's not good. And the violin goes off to the left. You can turn your head and then your nose and your scroll are still lined up, but then that's where the shoulders are. Okay, so, and the point I was trying to make there is, okay, now I'm turning my whole body, right? So I've still got a good lineup. Is that my arm should be underneath the fingerboard and not off behind the violin. Those are things to look for. So keep, make sure that your arm is underneath your violin underneath the fingerboard specifically, um, unless you're maybe pivoting it around a little bit for the G string or the E string. But on A, if you're playing on the A string, it should be bang underneath, just hanging straight down. Um, and there's this relationship, okay? So you've got a mouse hole, you've got bumps in your thumb, your thumb is low enough that your fingers are high. The other thing you can do is consciously pull your pinky up Okay, when you pull that pinky up, look what happens to the wrist. It's coming out. Now I'm in a good shape. Look, I can reach all sorts of notes. If I let that pinky slide down, now I can't really reach those notes. The other thing that happens is people, as they try to place the third and fourth fingers, are actually pushing the hand backwards, and then the finger is completely straight. That's not good. So let's go back to this position. Okay. Fingers high, thumb pretty low, um, and now just curl the fingers down and, and just place them. Don't try to apply any pressure, okay? Keep the back of the hand pretty close, okay? If the back of the hand is out there, I mean, what are the options? My fourth finger's not even going to touch the violet, right? You've got to bring it in. Your fingers should have an up, oh, that's not a good angle. They should be up, across, and down. Okay, up, across, and down. <laughs> don't don't let your fingers be placed like that. Okay, that won't work. They'll get they'll get kind of locked into position. Okay, there was one other thing I wanted to discuss. It's on the same topic, but it's completely different. I have a theory. <laughs> Tell me what you think. But I have the impression that a lot of people are clutching their violins because there's something else that's not working. And the something else that's not working is bicep muscle. You have to actually have a little bit of strength in your biceps. And look, if you push up with your biceps, and I'm not really in a good position to show you this because I wanted to be close to the camera. Okay, so if I push up, now look what happens to my hand. That can be quite relaxed. So put your energy into your biceps. And now when you come along, you can resist, 
But look, the hand is still relaxed and I can still just drop my fingers in a very relaxed fashion. Okay. So uh, yeah, don't, if, if your arm is dropping and the biceps are not working at all, then the hand is obliged to clutch the violin because otherwise it's going to fall onto the floor, right? So make sure that you're actually using the biceps to hold your violin up so that the fingerboard should be horizontal or very close to horizontal. And that liberates, that allows you, as long as you keep your wrist out a little bit, that allows this to be really relaxed. Now, if I drop this, now I end up with this. Now, that's not so free. See what I mean? Okay, but the basics is thumb down, fingers up, wrist a little bit out, and test that, okay? And then just let the fingers drop and keep them in a square position. That's really important. You can just focus on that for weeks and months, and, and that, that's a good start. All right, so good luck. I hope that helps. Bye.